This is a story for those who wish that they could truly read between the lines of the book they were reading and see the world of the story through the eyes of the author. For those who wish that they could make nonfiction from fiction. For those who wish that dreams were true. This is a story of a group of wayward friends who came together from the far reaches of two worlds to come together and to help make dreams reality. This is Hazeltown Story. Hello and welcome to Hazeltown Story episode 16. Um, we are now actually starting to get into kind of the meat of the story. Uh, so if you need a kind of brief uh, summary of what we've been doing, uh, we have been uh, tasked by Theron to take a look at how exactly those lenses, the right orbs from the first arc, uh, how powerful they are essentially. And uh, our group uh, placed a bunch in a national park and um, basically ran afoul, well, not ran afoul, but basically um, came across the curiosity of D-Pass, which is uh, Hazeltown in the uh, Council of Seed Bear Nations uh, primary uh, I guess law enforcement, although they're not really police, they're more of a uh, first responder safety division, um, at least what they ran into. Uh, but basically, have kind of struck their curiosity, and basically, um, one of the head uh, rangers at the park uh, kind of came across them and basically are looking into it. Uh, and we basically just left off after meeting him. Uh, by him, I mean the kind of the main point of contact, which is one Sergeant Tobias Moon, or Tobias Moon, uh, who uh, basically tried to take a look to it and accidentally fried a few of the magic lenses. Um, but nonetheless, uh, that is kind of what we've been doing so far. Uh, this game has been basically the players of this game. We got uh, Carnival playing Uhar Governor. You have uh, Deathmaster playing Bobby. Uh, you are being kind of a former uh, South Seas pirate uh, and who has come to Hazeltown to try and find a new life. Bobby, who is uh, described by some as a sleaze elemental, who is basically a giant dragon man who uh, basically is trying to wheel and deal a whole lot. And you also have Torpetyphus playing Aravia, the chaos cow, I guess. Um so, yeah, um, I'm going to go ahead and say uh, when I uh, when we held this session, uh, I was I was kind of at the tail end of kind of suffering from some illness during the week. So I it, this is not my greatest DMing. I'll go ahead and say um, I actually had to cut out a good uh, amount of bit at the beginning because. It's actually something, since this is actually me trying to figure out uh, my skills as a DM, I am not good, or at least I need to very improve a whole lot on uh, basically doing some exposition that involves me like referring to multiple other characters. And that's something I don't, I should always try and have it that um, when I'm actually doing the DMing session with other people, that if they're not really involved, I probably shouldn't have them, like I should probably keep those aside. Which is actually something I'm going to be testing out with this episode. I am actually going to kind of do a brief summary of what exactly happened rather than actually show what we did in the session uh, to make it a little bit cleaner and also to kind of elaborate on certain other things. So yeah, um, there's that. But uh, after we have this brief introduction, uh, we will actually be getting into the episode itself. So um, with that, uh, let us go into a kind of summary of what happened directly after their meeting. After their meeting with D-Pass, Theron encouraged Sergeant Toby Moon to join him in a meeting at the Hazeltown Library. There, he showed Sergeant Moon the recording of the previous session and the results of it. Primarily out of curiosity, Sergeant Moon agreed to join them uh, in a scrying session. Sergeant Moon and his head of subordinates replaced some of the lost magic lenses, although it turns out that that wasn't necessary uh, basically necessary because they had already gotten a decent amount of footage. After Sergeant Moon, Yuhar, Bobby, and Aravia um, gathered at the Hazeltown Library, it was determined actually that for their session, 
that Rhapsody would be a good companion for them. It turns out that this actually is good for two reasons. Namely, Rhapsody is actually familiar with Sergeant Moon and actually a good friend of them of theirs because Sergeant Moon, as a hobby, is kind of an inspiring musician. Uh, he plays the guitar and tries to be get better at his vocals, but uh, yeah, he's still kind of working on that. But uh, Toby and Rhapsody are actually pretty good friends. Uh, the second reason being that Toby would not be able to be uh, put under by Rhapsody's audio magic. You see, Toby has a disease called kinomyeloma, which prevents certain magical event or certain magical sp uh, spells to not be able to take effect on him. And he would need to be put under by stronger magic, that being our Dr. Lomi being able to put him under. So Rhapsody would not be needed, so Rhapsody could actually join them on their adventure. After they decided that, the group was put under, and basically using the audio lenses that they had collected from the park, they had all entered a collective their collective vision. We leave off, or we start, basically, as soon as they had been put under. So, at this point, um, you all kind of feel like, you all start to feel like you are all individually in a little bit of kind of a open room. Like you all feel like you are in a kind of a haze. Uh, and in there, you see basically a woman sitting at a desk uh, with a book. And it is the same book that was on that table. Um, and the woman there is uh, basically looks like a hominid uh, with pointed ears and green to or green skin and green hair. Uh, Aravia, you would recognize her as Bibli, uh, the ghost from the last uh, kind of session. Uh, and basically she says, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm going to be your host, Bibli, for this evening. Uh, I am here to guide you through the Sapphires Lake National Park. And Theron has asked me, or Theron has asked me to find a kind of point in time throughout the last couple of weeks that might be a good way to illustrate what how far these cameras can see. Um, and don't worry, I have found a rather interesting evening. Uh, one that can actually benefit myself. And with that, uh, you all kind of goes dark, it kind of goes dark for a sec, but then it comes, uh, basically you start to see a kind of a bright light and you kind of, once the light kind of dissipates, uh, you all see that you are standing in the parking lot of the Sapphires Lake Park. And around you, you can hear a lot of commotion. Um, and when you take a look around, uh, you happen to notice one kind of key thing. Um, when you look down at your body, you notice that it is slightly transparent. And also you I'm feel dying. slightly lighter than what you did before. Uh, you also see, uh, Bibli standing right in front of you. And basically she says, welcome to the Sapphire's Lake, Lake National Park. On a Friday night, tonight is a concert for for what I believe the magazines are referring to as a progressive rock group called Revelry that I have heard the kids in this library talk about, and I want to hear them. So I am going to go watch the concert, and you can do whatever you want. And she basically heads off to essentially the amphitheater from the park last time. Uh, so, uh, yes, you are all in the Sapphire and basically as she walks away, she looks, it's like, oh yes, uh, you all have no corporeal form here. Uh, you can all take a look at things. You can hear things and you can, you can basically see, you can hear, and that's about it. You will not be able to interact with anything. So don't try it, but you can see. So I guess, uh, go wild. I'm going to go to the concert. And then she leaves. Bobby will pull out one of his ghost cigars now, I guess, and light it. Okay. Mmm. That's the good stuff. 
can't imagine it's that satisfying if it's not real. Your mind makes it real. Okay. It's very real. Could you just leave? Yeah, I'm leaving. Ah. I'm, no, I'm gone. Later. Goodbye. And okay. And Ravia just heads back towards the feeding area. Uh, to the what area? The feeding area, wherever it was. Oh, yeah. Yep, yep. Okay, where you put the where you put the orb. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so you head there. So basically at this point, uh it is uh you uh, basically it's you are, it's Bobby, it is Rhapsody and Toby. Uh to which uh Rhapsody is used to this. She's done it a few times before, so she's not really phased by it. Uh Toby is, however, looking kind of uh down and looking around. He's like, Yeah, I think. This is, I remember, I was here on duty that night. And he's kind of like, um, like kind of looking around is like, yeah, this is kind of where this is a pretty good representation. Um, okay, we don't have to worry about some weird never shall pass selves beat thing, right? Well, um, basically, uh, We'll, we'll we'll find out about that. So you you all so basically you three were not there that night. However, uh, Toby might be. So we will see about that. Um, but um, I will let you all decide where you want to go. So basically, uh, you have the amphitheater where the concert is going around. Uh, you have the kind of lakeside area where there's kind of um, the boat rental area and where uh, kind of that little sitting area that looks over the lake. You have the feeding area. Uh, you have the um, kind of area where there's a few campsites, like you play place to put tents. And also uh, there is a open field that you can go. Um, so uh, where all would you want to go? I'll let DM hmm. take the first pick. Oh, dang it. Uh, Jibabi's not just this will displease says Ravi. Bobby will also head to the feeding area. All right. And Yuhar's going to follow him follow, follow him then because it's like his, this ghost thing is weird. All right. So you all kind of effortlessly glide over to where the feeding area is. Like it takes real time, but you all kind of walk over there. Um, and basically, um, Rhapsody chooses to kind of, um, she's kind of like, oh, I've, I've, ever, I've heard about this pen, but I've never seen it. I'm going to go join Bibli. Uh, so she's walking over to the, the amphitheater. And Toby just kind of has the idea of basically, you know, I'm curious about something. And he walks off as well. Um, so basically you walk over to, so basically you all end up at the feeding area again. Yes. Why you know, did you follow me? I ain't following you. I'm looking for something very specific. Wanted to check up on one of my boys. It's a rare opportunity. And Ravi is just going to float up the big tree. Okay. So, yep. You go over there and you see um, where the so in the feeding area uh there is no one's really there uh everyone most of the people are at the concert uh it is at night um so the area is actually lit so uh it's not like it's pitch black um but you can see the general area and as you climb up the tree you can in fact see where the orb is and it Let's is climb and more over. ascend. Well, yeah, I, I imagine that you're doing the counter strike ladder thing of you're just kind of just moving upwards along the tree. 100 percent Eravia has taken incredibly well to this and is just doing that. <laughs> just the source engine glide up a ladder. <laughs> yes. Amazing. Um so yeah, you see um do you go all the way to the top? All the way to the top. Uh, also, as far I'm away not... from Bob B as possible. Uh, also, uh, I am not going to uh, make you roll for anything because you are a ghost. I am a ghost. Uh, so yeah, uh, you go to the top of the tree and you have 
a very good look at the at the park. Um, you can see at the amphitheater there is the concert. Uh, you can also kind of vaguely hear it. Uh, to you, it is mostly noise. Uh, to some, it is art. Uh, and basically, you see a whole bunch of people around the crowd. Uh, also around the park, you see uh, kind of randomly lit areas as people have tents and all that. Um, also, also, what, really, really quick. What year is this supposed to be relative to ours? 1970. Exactly. Around there, yes. Okay, I was gonna say if it's the mid 70s, then Ravi is more of a punk person. Uh, so it's plus or minus. It's 1970 plus or minus uh, eight years. Yeah. Okay. Aravi is more of a punk person. She likes noise. Yep. You hired uh, the disco, so. Yep. Um. So from there, is there any particular area you want to check out? Uh, since I'm up here and taking in the sights, what about that secret area? Is there anything going on over there? Uh, hmm. So, I guess from this distance, so it is actually kind of far away. I, I, I am actually going to make you. Would roll. I see lights or smoke? Um, if you're just taking a casual look, uh, you would actually see something over there. You would see a faint bit of light. God damn it. Um. So, yes, the, you would see a faint bit of light. Well, guess what? I know where I'm going. I'm not going to tell any of the others about this. I'm just going to head that way. Well, I'm sure we can see you float off that direction. So <laughs> I'm high up right now. You're... Unless y'all fucking sourced up the goddamn tree, too. Might as well. I, I just imagine. <laughs> like, it's a very kind of a Hello Gordon kind of scene up there. <laughs> Of like just three people just randomly standing in a weird crouching position on top of this tree. Well, um, hello, Ravia. Two. Oh yes. Yeah, Bobby will just, just watch this from the ground and watch them float off. Okay. Um so I guess you kind of kind of project yourself so you kind of have a really weirdly floating arc back down to the ground as you kind of descend go over to the to the uh, little area over in the island. Um, exactly. So, uh, I guess while you while you do that, uh, Bobby, what were you trying to do? Bobby was checking out a couple of employees of his. He had people in the park passing out flyers. Okay. Wanted um, to make sure they were working hard. Actually, how how about this? Um, uh. But before you actually glide down from the tree, uh, you hear a rustling below you. Uh, do you choose to investigate the rustling or do you choose to um, uh, go over there instead? I'm leaving because it means I'm away from Bobby. I want to see what that light is. but do you, do, you, do you want to sit here, figure out what this rustling is, or do you want to go over the island first? I was going over the island first. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, we'll have you just kind of glide over there. Uh, so, you glide over and you come across the... Um, you come across the path and you hear... Uh, basically, you go over there and you kind of hear in the very faint distance uh, a very low-quality kind of... Sounds like some sort of music play. Uh, like, as you get to that little... Thing of trees worth the arrow next to it uh you basically mm -hmm. you basically can hear like music play okay uh so do you do you just want to go in yeah of course or, like, go go the they can see me i'm a ghost yeah okay well. so uh you head over and you basically see in there that there are three tents and you also see in in kind of that far corner where you found like where it looks like the rocks were in the campfire, you find a campfire. And by the campfire, you see, um, let's see, let me do the count. You see six people next to the campfires passed out. Anything around them? Uh, nothing in particular. Uh, outside of a few, let's see. Um, you see 
Uh, no, you don't see anything in particular next to it. Okay. Well, I meant next to the people. Uh, next to oh, next to people. There's nothing really that uh, would indicate um, what uh, they would like. What um, anything next to them? Okay. Uh, the one thing you do see is that you do notice is that inside they're all kind of sitting around a, a circle around the fire. Uh, you notice that there is a kind of a spot where someone could be sitting uh, that is missing. Hmm. Okay. Um. So, is there anything else you want to kind of take a look at real quick? No. Oh, yeah. Just give the the campsite a quick once over. Okay. Uh. So you float or kind of go over by one of the tents. Uh. And you something catches your eye. Uh. You see someone. Uh. That is kind of. You see a, um, let's see, you see a, I would say somewhat middle-aged looking, uh, raccoon man, uh, laying on the ground, uh, bleeding who has been passed out. Uh, he is basically, he looks like he's been smacked on the back of the head. Oh, oh, this is bad. You are, I think something might not be good here. Yeah, we might want to go find the others. Okay. You can go to the concert. Fine. But, um, so uh, also, I'll let you. Uh, I'll just let you know this in case you want to check. Um, as you kind of leave, you kind of see if you can poke into the tents. Uh, all they're kind of they're all kind of closed, uh, but you don't have any mechanism to see to open them. Essentially, they are kind of they're like in a game where the there it's just a texture. Like you try and like unzip it, but there's nothing there to unzip because there's no way to see inside. Correct. Uh, so you, that is all what you see in that, uh, that kind of clearing. Uh, so is there any particular way, uh, other way? So, uh, also DM, are you just, you're just handing up, you're basically just checking things out. You're not doing anything particular that we need to Pretty see. Much, yeah. Okay. Uh, so Torpo and, D uh, Carnival, you all, you both head back to the concert where, uh, there you see, uh, Kind of you kind of see the crowd kind of looking in, uh, but kind of on top of a hill, uh, almost kind of standing out in a little bit. Uh, you see uh, Bibli and uh, Rhapsody kind of sitting uh, by each other and just looking at the concert. Uh, so uh, they and then basically Rhapsody kind of says, like, oh, hey, uh, do you see anything interesting? Someone got beat over the back of their head. Uh, Rhapsody kind of opens uh, opens her wide, eyes wide. Is like, wait, what? Yeah, well, there's a small like clearing over it, by the lake, and we found it earlier. It looks like some weird cult thing, but basically there was a person laying with their head beaded. And basically, she's kind of looking. Is like, that's horrible. Um, and Bibli that just kind body of still looks good enough to, for someone to. Body's good enough to put in a coffin. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, and then basically, well, also I'll, I'll say it. Basically, he got hit, but he's not like he'll be. He, basically, uh, eventually someone will get to him. Okay. Like it's not like caved in. He basically got smacked, basically enough to knock him out. Ah, so just a concussion. Yes. He's not. He's not doing like he's not like good but he's not dead okay um so basically uh bibli's just kind of been minding her own uh and basically uh after kind of a while she's kind of looks back he was like huh well if we get everyone together i can kind of uh see what's going on over there uh go quick find uh uh since it's just you two go quick find that uh the D pass oh, okay. guy and find uh go find Bobby. I thought a Ravi stayed at the site. Oh Ravi stayed okay. So uh go find go find a Ravia and go find everyone else and bring them over here. Aravia is at the site so still so Well we need her over here. Uh we need to be all together for me to uh do this or it's going to potentially cause some issues. Oh we can't be having any desync. Yep. Okay, so Yuhar's going to head over that way then. Uh, so you're heading over to, um, uh, you're heading over to the site again? Yeah. All right, uh, so, 
Uh, Aravi, is there anything in particular you want to see by the campsite that you can kind of see if you have an open eye that you, or like something that's out in the open? Yeah, I'll take a closer look at the people and see if I can figure out anything on going on with them. Okay. Uh, so you kind of, you kind of try and like reach into their pocket, uh, and uh, weirdly enough, you actually can open up their pockets, and uh, for a few of them, you can actually find uh, some identification on them. Uh, so one of the people that's uh, by there is a, they are a, uh, let's see. They are a kind of a uh, mid 20 ish, or basically he's a mid, looks mid 20s. Uh, he is a lynx person, a uh, gray fur, um, kind of a toned body, uh, long red hair. Uh, and in there, you actually find not only do you find his ID, uh, you see that his name is Simon Hawk. You also find a press, pa uh, press pass on him hmm. uh, that uh, on there it's listed. Uh, his name is Simon, or basically on his ID, you see that it is Simon Hawk with his, um, his tribe name is Screeching Robin. Uh, and you find that out about him. Uh, another person that you see, you see a uh, early 20s, uh, kind of a bald, kind of uh, average looking uh, person with um, uh, basically uh, kind of has some uh, like heavy makeup on that kind of makes them look kind of warlockish. Uh, they are kind of dressed up in a robe. Uh, there is nothing you can find on them. Uh, the, um, um, the only thing that you can see is you can see that they are carrying a book. Uh, and that book is, I had it written down. Uh, let's see. Um, the book is, uh, High Priest by Timothy Leary. Okay. Um, it, it, that's basically what you can see. Is you can see that that, that is the book. Um, another person that you can see, you can find. Uh, you see another kind of, uh, another a probably late, like very early twenties, late tw uh, late like teens, uh, kind of white human or light hominid uh, uh, lady uh, that's kind of. Kind of slim, uh, but blonde hair. Uh, you see that she has a her. She actually has a uh, Steinwald University student ID on her, and you can see that her name is Carrie Key. You also come across a um, kind of middle-aged uh, black hominid uh, that kind of has a kind of a bad body or like a dad bod and like shaggy mm -hmm. uh, salt and pepper hair. Uh, you find actually a uh, an imp, like a temporary ID that's usually given uh, a, a temporary ID uh, that has his name as Leland Free. Uh, you can also tell that he is an immigrant from the United States. Okay. Uh, you see also a uh, mid late early twenties uh, chipmunk uh, a chipmunk lady uh, with brown fur. Uh, average kind of body shape, uh, long brown hair, uh, with glasses. And you can also tell she also has a student ID. Uh, her name is Piper Sparrow. Mm -hmm. And you also find a, uh, kind of a, uh, average looking, uh, basically probably mid thirties, uh, lion man with a kind of a red mane. Um, and his name is Marquis Butler. Okay. Uh, you also see that he is, uh, on here, you also, you find that, you actually find that he is uh, on, he is here uh, from the Moon Breacon region. Okay. Uh, so there you can, there is the, kind of the people that are sitting around. Okay. Um, uh, let's see, I'm trying to think. Uh, there is also, uh, you can't, there is, I'll say this, uh, there is also some, uh, there are a few plates there, there's a table that also has a few plates on them mm -hmm. uh, that looks like there's also some uh, kind of small canisters that uh, look like they um, basically they had something in them, but th what was in them before has kind of been uh, like used. Yeah, so it's uh, not about unlikely or... uh, you Yeah, you, you can tell though that some of them were slightly... Um, 
there you find uh somewhat of a powdery substance in one of them Ooh, you can see like residue of something white in there Ooh. oh no oh uh, no oh um yeah so that is what you can kind of see over there okay well i think that's enough of everyone else's time taken up all right uh so uh you are your uh i take it you were on your head way over there yeah i was over on my way over there um oh actually one other thing did you want to take a look at the body that was you found bleeding yeah I'll, yeah 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 um you uh basically find on him uh you f actually find in uh he is wearing a coat that has a lot of pockets on it uh, and you actually find on is kind of a lot of them are empty uh you find in uh basically you find on here basically the id kind of alone uh you also find mm -hmm. some like loose cash on him you also find his id in a kind of a hidden spot uh and on there you can tell that he is uh his name is byron nielsen uh he is a uh it's listed that he is uh like he is 47 uh he is definitely a raccoon person with kind of long dark brown hair and that he is a like he's a resident of the area okay uh so there's that uh so i take you are you're coming in yep okay did uh you want to kind of discuss what you found yeah well i'm sure we just tri i ask about it but just in that happens off screen because you just kind of have the you don't have any particular questions you just have the or do you want to check anything out for yourself i'd rather wait till we had everyone else for more big stuff so all right all right uh, we need to keep we need to meet up everybody so we can investigate this more directly and not they, they, they can't just come over here i asked i didn't feel like prodding do do i really need to go there do you want to experiment do you want to be the test subject for experimental magic nonsense you know what you've got a point i just oh no it the music it lacks energy i mean yes but it'll be we, we won't be there for long probably but nobody's even gonna get injured jeez okay so you i take it you both kind of head over to the area yeah yep. okay so you need to find bobby and uh and uh toby because you all both kind of meet up with rhapsody seeing if they found anyone uh so um you kind of uh uh basically at that point uh you kind of meet up with billy again and then basically uh she says it's like do you have did you find the others no we're looking for them now uh uh rhapsody could just kind of um she kind of uh goes over or basically says you know i think i saw toby kind of go over by the feeding area uh yeah you know or... what i'll get the rabbit if you get bobby sure okay uh so aravia you head over to the feeding area Free and basically uh basically you go over there and you see toby kind of stand uh basically standing in the middle looking at one of the trees hey rent a cup what you thinking about uh, basically, uh, he just kind of he just kind of looks at you, and then he's like, "Come here," and basically okay. points to the tree, and she's like, and "He's like, take a look at this. I'm curious what's going to happen now." Uh, in which you see, um, or basically, he's in there. He's like, "Yeah, I, I'm waiting for waiting for something." Okay. Uh, just wait. It should be. He looks at his watch. It should be. Right about now. And then basically you hear rustling over in the distance and you see um, walking over in the feeding area is Toby, the actual person, Toby. Oh, hey, look, it's a real rent -a -cop. He just kind of looks at you and just kind of gives a, sl a slide eye and just kind of ignores what you're saying. And so basically he's like, yeah. What's going to happen now is this is when I took off one of these. Uh, I, this is before I took or before I took off one of the uh, um, little orb things. So I'm curious to see what happens. 
why are you curious? Well, if are, this are you is some kind of narcissist. Well, no, I the word for you. Well, this is a um, this is where I took off on the orbs. And if the orbs are kind of judging what we're seeing, then what's you're wondering oh, if it's to go dark. Yeah. Yeah, that, ex mm, you know, now that I think about it, which is an impressive task, uh, that would probably explain why we couldn't get into the tents. Well, uh, I'm going to, I'm. this is when I went and climbed up the tree, so let's find out. Okay, uh, well, I'm going to follow, and then she just starts sourcing up alongside Toby. Okay. Real Toby. Just because she can. Uh, okay. <laughs> So you kind of stay there or you kind of go up the thing, the thing. And basically you watch him climb up and take the lower of the two uh, that you plant on the tree. And basically you go up and you see him find the uh, orb. And basically he sits it and he just kind of fiddles with it. He's like, and you hear him say, okay, what, what, what the hell is this thing? And you see him kind of take off the tree. And then all of a sudden you see uh, the thing start to fizzle in his hand a little bit. Uh, and then you start to see to emit smoke for about a second. And then he just disappears. Like as if he was never there. God, if only it were so easy. Uh, and Toby's just sitting there like, huh, that's weird. Can't believe well, he just d disappeared. Yeah, I, I guess these things are doing what they're supposed to do. All right. Did Removing you find anything you from reality? Well, the, well, I don't think this is reality. I think this is a, a replay of reality. Yeah, sure. Okay. All right. Did you find anything? Uh, dude with his skull bashed in. Uh, Toby just kind of looks over, it kind of looks at you and Craig just like, Hey, what? You heard me. Where? You know, over in that, that secret spot. A bunch of people are passed out over there, too. He just kind of thinks it's like, okay, I knew that there were the, probably those damn drug users again. Um, they had some white powder. I bet they did. Um, usually they just kind of kept themselves, but I guess they're starting to get into starting to get in the like, trouble. Okay. Um, where are they? they? You said they're in their they're kind of, uh, they're in that kind of area that you found. Yeah, but unfortunately, we need to go meet up with the rest of the concert. All right. Uh, I guess but, I'll head over there. It's such a lame concert. There's not even any fucking. He, basically, he just kind of chooses to overhear what you just said. <laughs> uh, and then you basically walk back to uh, where uh, Rhapsody and Billy are. Uh, so. Bobby, where where hey where are you at this moment? Yeah, Bobby has been standing in the feed court, watching a couple of his employees when Yuhar walks up. You've just been sitting here watching your you're awful. You are awful if you're just watching your your micromanaging through using time to micromanage. Ah, not micromanaging. Yeah, come look at this. Right, sure. Look at these boys work. Look how hard they're shilling my merchandise. This is why I pay them the good bucks. Okay. Anyway, we time need to Time and head... time again, I appreciate Bob <laughs> B's amazing ability to do fucking nothing. <laughs> He's done nothing this campaign. <laughs> but I, I, Bob... That might change in a little bit, but we'll see. But Bobby, we need to head back uh, we found at that clearing, someone got their got beat beat over in that clearing area, and so we need to get the group together to do weird magic shit to see if we can investigate that bit more. Why? Ah, this is the park. There's bodies all around here. Get a shovel, I can show you a few of them. While you're correct about that, these also had some weird powder, so. <laughs> Weird powder, sure. Aren't you a pirate? I was a courier as a pirate. Never partake mm. of the package. Oh, I understand that too. Never partake of the product, but still. 
that that guarantee you that pattern ain't that mysterious. It's better this way. Again, we have the cop here. Let let's keep the thing on the plausible deniability. Ugh, you're right. Damn fools bringing the pigs in. All right, let's go. Okay, so you all meet up, um, and basically, Bibby Bibby just kind of stands up and says, "All right, well." If we think that there is probably some sort of incident, um, I should have the data to be, or we should have, if we can see here, uh, we should be able to check uh, probably a few hours back, and that should be able to let us see what was happening at that point. Um, so uh, what I need to, everyone to do is just stand still for one moment. And then basically you see uh, Bibli kind of focus, uh, and basically she kind of reaches her book it just kind of pages through through it a little bit. And then she kind of just goes to a page and it's like, and just kind of rubs her hand kind of over it. And you see that she, her hands kind of start to glow. And basically she says, okay, um, just, it's going to go dark for a sec, but it's going to be fine afterwards. And then basically, uh, as you see, like if you looked at her hand while she was doing it, she kind of closed her hand. And as she was closing her hand, uh, basically your vision started to go dark. Uh, but then after a second, it started to light up. And as you were all standing by the amphitheater, uh, you see that basically uh, everyone was, you basically see the uh, amphitheater is kind of no longer has the amount of people there. And you see that it is kind of, basically it looks like everything is being set up for this concert. Uh, and it is slightly less like it is just maybe after sunset. Um, so it is starting to get dark, but it is not quite dark. Like it's not fully dark yet. Like it was at the concert. Um, All right. And basically every, uh, basically you see everyone, like everyone there is basically um, like you're, you're all just standing there at this, in this little corner. Uh, so basically, Toby kind of shakes his head a little bit and just kind of getting used to having the thing black out for a second. It's like, all right, let's go over there. And then basically uh, all, I think it's all seven of you? All six. 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 Yeah. 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 Six. Um, all six of you kind of source over to the, over to the island. I love uh, that that's become a thing, just... <laughs> that that you all just kind of float over to the uh, area where they, you found the bodies. Uh, and basically uh, at that point you see, uh, you see basically uh, someone sitting on a chair or you see, uh, you see the, um, the uh, raccoon, basically the raccoon man that got his head or basically got knocked out. Uh, he is sitting on a chair uh, kind of looking like he's minding his own business on the island. Uh, and he has a book that he is reading. Um, so uh, it, is there anyone, uh, like, basically, is there anything you want to check? I want to check that you... book. Sure, yeah. Uh, you see that the book is, uh, you kind of just kind of, like, look, like, you don't look the crouch, you're trying to see it through his hand, what the name of the book is. Uh, and you can tell that the name of the book is, uh, it is The Psychedelic Experience by Timothy Leary. Oh, God. Okay. Now I remember that name exactly. Why? God, this is awful. Oh, yeah. God. Timothy Leary was crazy. Yep. Uh, so, yeah, you saw the, see that he is reading that book. And uh, do you want to check more about him or do you want to head into the camp? Oh, look him over. Okay. Um, so basically, you you can't really tell anything uh, particular about him. Uh, you can eventually. He does eventually uh, pull out. Um, he does eventually pull out. Uh, what you see as a cigarette, but you probably know exactly what it is. Yeah, uh, he's smoking a yeah. Yeah. Yep. He, yep. Yep. He just lights one up on the chair. And Look, basically Aravia has seen himself. a drug or two in her time. Yeah, you can tell that it is a hand roll joint, essentially. Uh, uh, and he also he, notices. 
and goes, <laughs> yeah, Bobby would know. Fella and pulls out another cigar. I, I like to imagine that basically it is you pulling out the cigar thing, uh, but then you take like the cigar out and it's like uh, some like early 3D game where the cigar has a case has the exact same amount of cigars in it. I like to imagine that every time Bobby stops thinking about the cigar, though, it disappears in his animation resets. Probably. <laughs> um, so, yeah, uh, you basically see him. He is having a time uh, and he looks like he is waiting for someone. Can't believe he's reading a book while about smoking a fat one. That's <laughs> I was going to say it's, it's a, a lot more than I was going to say that one has a lot more to do with just smoking a fat one. No, that's yeah. Timothy Leary. That is, boy, those episodes of the dollop were certainly. I I just looked him up real quick, quick, and I enjoy one quote, which is the hero of the American consciousness. Yep. <laughs> oh boy. Look, I'm just saying, reading about getting high while getting high is certainly something. Yes. Um. I would like to point out that in historical t- context, uh, Timothy Leary did uh, like the book High Priest is about him trying to uh, sell the idea of drug use as a religion. So, yeah, no, I kind of once I once I recognize the name, it's like oh, this clicked. Oh no, oh no. Yeah. Uh, so as you're all standing there, uh. And basically, Toby's just kind of looking at him. He's trying to see if he recognizes. He's like, he just, he just kind of is. Uh, he's like, I think I've seen him before. And also, he is completely unfazed by him smoking the cigarette, like the doobie. He's a cop, of course. Can't believe. This... Also, also, this is. I can't believe he's reading about getting high while getting high. What kind of fucking nerd does that? Clearly, this one. You've never met these people before, have you? No. I've seen them around these camps before, or like these uh, parks before, but usually usually we just kind of sense that they're distributing and just kind of let them, like, kind of give them the, like, you shouldn't be doing this, and they usually just kind of go away. Uh, But I guess we're going to have a more... Interesting experience here. Look, I'm just saying, if you're gonna do it, do it. Don't be, don't be a chump. Uh, so as you're all standing there, uh, you happen to see someone that you recognize as you. You see, uh, you see uh, two people take a boat, or basically, uh, you see, uh, someone take a boat that has uh three people on there, and you see on the boat you have. Uh, let's, let me pull up the names again. Uh, you see, uh, Leland Free, uh, the, uh, elder, uh, black hominid, or hominid. Uh, you see, uh, Piper Sparrow and you see Carrie, uh, Carrie Key, uh, kind of the two, uh, students, uh, walk in or basically kind of, uh, take a boat up to the thing and, uh, basically, uh, uh, you see Byron kind of uh, say to uh, to Leland, I was like, it basically you see him kind of wave, and it's like, uh, and basically Leland just kind of waves back, uh, and then you hear Byron say, "All right, ladies, you got something over here?" Or basically, "All right, ladies." Um, for some reason I'm just blanking on what out phrases. He's like, "What's the code?" Uh, to which they say. Swordfish. Sure, they say swordfish. Um, or 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 how about this? Uh, they say the swordfish, the sword, the the swordfish. They fucking swims. struggle with it. Yeah, they it basically they're like, oh god, what, what was it? The sword, the sword, the swordfish swims deep. The falcon flies high. There. What a terrible password. Uh. So and and then Byron just kind of smiles. He's like, "All right, follow the arrow and just go on in. Welcome to the Cassiopeia." Uh, and basically, they go down the path. The Cassiopeia. Well, it, well welcome to uh, welcome to Cassiopeia. Probably. 
No, no, no. This is this is all in character. Aravi is genuinely confused why you would name something like this. Uh, basically, Toby says, "I I can't quite remember why they're named." Uh, all these. Oh wait, that's right. He was smoking a doobie. Yeah. Um. So. Yeah. Um. So basically, you see them walk in, and then Leland just kind of. Uh, you see Leland just kind of in the boat, just kind of go past or go back. Uh, Byron just, and then Byron just continues to read and enjoy his blunt. Uh, so basically, does anyone have any ideas for what they want to do? So we can't. Normally, in these situations, I'd go in guns blazing, but since that's not an option, I guess we could just go and follow in. It's not like they can do anything to harm us or then. Yeah, they, they still cannot see you or anything. So why not just follow in and wait for someone to have a bad trip? Okay. So you follow. Oh. Nope. I was just going to say before you do that, just on the bright side, it doesn't seem like there's any bad blood, unfortunately. Yeah. Yep. This is kind of boringly peaceful. I'm disappointed. Uh, so basically, um,. Basically, uh, as you all walk in, uh, Rhapsody just kind of pipes up and is like, you know, uh, I'm going to sit out here and see if anyone else comes. Uh, you all go on ahead. Okay, uh, sure. So she'll be sitting out there while you uh, you four go in. Uh, Bibli is also sitting there. Uh, she is looking over the shoulder trying to read along with the book. Uh, I can understand more in her case because she can't get high. Actually, I wonder if this is actually the only domain in which she can get high as the ghost realm. Huh. She's she a ghost. Barb she needs to ask Bobby about some cigars. Um, yeah, uh, so basically... Uh, actually, how about this? Uh, you see, before you leave, you see Bibli uh, try and reach into his pocket uh, where he pulled out the joint, and she, pull he she pulls out another one, uh, and... Uh, she basically waits for him to uh, light up another one and win. Or basically, he has his run out, and then eventually he tries and takes another one. Uh, and basically, uh, or how about this? Uh, Bully takes one out of his pocket, and then as she looks, he's like, uh, he's like, well, I can't. Or, actually, what am I doing? Uh, yeah, she takes one out, and then with her finger, uh, she kind of like, like does a thumbs up, and at the end of the thumbs up is a. Uh, basically a light or basically a, a little flame which she uses to light up and she oh. it basically looks at it and she's like have fun yeah uh, and, ravi ain't one to judge uh so you all uh walk in to the camp in the camp uh you basically see that it is in fact rather peaceful uh and you see the um basically you see the uh two uh, two students kind of are talking to a uh, older, uh, an older raccoon uh, lady that you did not see around the same age as Byron. Uh, that basically uh, she is talking to the two students uh, that she is a person that you do not recognize uh, from the area or like from the, your original like view of the yeah, area. She was the missing spot. Possibly. Um, but you see uh, them talking, but you uh, also see that uh, basically you see everyone uh, that was uh, kind of around there is all kind of congregating. And uh, also you happen to see um, in there is basically, uh, or basically you see that uh, two of the tents are actually open. Uh, so you could actually peer inside them. Um, but you do also see everyone else uh, kind of around the circle, uh, basically. Well, with the exception of Leland, and but you see the other people around them that you saw. Um, okay. Except there is also another person uh, that you see uh, that uh, wasn't there originally. Um, that was, uh, she is a, a young, or probably around uh, kind of, uh basically all uh, late teens early 20s uh she is uh a white yominid uh kind of pretty thin uh with a blonde pixie haircut 
and she is talking to having a good conversation with uh several of the other members that were sitting there anything interesting or is it just small talk uh you see that the plates that had the th containers were in there are not there yet oh i meant the conversation uh the conversation uh it is um I would say it is probably a sophomore level, uh, like maybe so like maybe not even sophomore, maybe like a freshman level philosophy discussion. Oh, no. oh God, they're these people. Uh, and basically a uh, brief discussion of like the kind of like God's watching over us kind of discussion. What is with people and gods? Jesus. I don't know. It's just the the hunt for the unknown, um, the quest for finding meaning in this existence. Yeah. Uh, shut up. Uh, also, you can see was it specifically about like living gods, or, or was it like what do you mean by living gods? Uh, like the whole thing that we dealt with with that other cult, who were about the, yes. the living gods or whatever. Yes, it, it is of that ilk. I will say. Oh, good. Um, also by the campfire where you originally saw like the, uh, scraped over like logo that you found, mm -hmm. uh, you do see a much clearer picture of three eyes drawn in the sand. God damn it. Um, so also, uh, one thing that you can see is you see, uh, Simon Hawk. Uh, he is kind of, he is having a, uh, interview with the bald, um, the bald, uh, kind of a mid twenties person who with, mm -hmm. with the impressive makeup, uh, basically, uh, he is having a discussion with them over, uh, basically you can kind of tell you're not listening fully closely, but you can tell that it is a discussion of what exactly, uh, Cassiopeia is meant to be. And basically, uh, it's kind of like at the tail end of this, of the uh, interview where they're just kind of, Talking over, th it's kind of like if you get like at the very tail end of a conversation, you can't quite tell what's going on. So you just hear words, but they kind of, you can't quite parse them out. Hmm. Like, it's basically all blah, blah, blah to you. Okay. Um, so, yeah. Um, you just kind of observe that there's, they're just kind of having a discussion at this point. Um, the, and basically you see that the two students are kind of uh, walking over them. Uh, and then basically, uh, after a little while that you kind of sit there and just kind of watch them converse, uh, basically, uh, you all, you all kind of get together, like all the four people that kind of went over there and Toby is just kind of like, yeah, I don't, they don't seem to be doing anything. Like, I don't see where anyone, any, like what can be going on? Uh, I don't. You said that uh who is the person that you saw uh said was uh was beaten? The idiot up front. Hmm. You know, smoking a joint while reading a book about getting high. Yeah, I don't think and did it look like he it was something they could do to himself? Oh, he was just smashed on the back of the head. It could have been an accident, knowing these idiots. Hmm. Well that that could be the case, but if they're all passed out, then that's probably not a good sign. Um, it is at that point that um, Rhapsody just kind of floats over to you all and it's like uh, okay um, we got some interesting looking characters coming in uh, and then basically um, you see uh, Leland and uh, uh, you see uh, Leland who is driving the boat uh, kind of uh, come in with Byron uh, and they are joined by two, um, they are joined by two, um, people that you did not recognize. Uh, they are basically, uh, two, two men essentially with, uh, very like buzz cut hair. They both look mid twenties. Uh, mm -hmm. and they are kind of dressed in, I would say, um, I would say almost punkish outfits. Okay. Uh, and then basically, uh, they go, uh, basically like you see Leland and Byron bring, bring them in. Uh, they look, uh, somewhat kind of more straight faced than they were before. Mm -hmm. Uh, and basically the two men, uh, walk over to the raccoon lady, 
uh, and then uh, basically in a somewhat opposing fashion, and you see them walk over to um, basically you see them walk over to the tent. Thank you for listening to Hazeltown Story. If you'd like to get updates on this show and many other shows hosted by me, Lola Puzzlo, you can follow at Hazeltown Story on Twitter. And if you would like to get to know me more from a personal standpoint, you can follow my personal Twitter at Lola Puzzlo. If you would like to watch this be recorded live, you can go to twitch.tv slash Puzzlo and follow the channel for notifications of when this show, as well as other shows like Retro Rank Rhapsody, are being recorded. If you would like to add this podcast to your podcatcher of choice, you can search for WLDP Hazeltown Radio and find us on most major podcatching search engines. Or you can manually add rss.hazeltown.life to your podcatcher. Thank you for listening, and I hope you come around for the next episode.